It was so good that I can edit these afterwards since no one's currently here, but that's okay. We'll just start and I'll shop away and see how it goes. So, welcome to How to Grow Garden. I'm Scarlett. Today I thought I'd do a little different. Um, first of all, it's live, so there's no editing. <laughs> I'm sitting in front of my chickens. The chimes are outside. They kind of nice if you can hear them, but it's really, really windy outside, so I hope it doesn't bother you guys too much. Um, also, I have Starlink, and if this cuts out, that's why. Starlink is amazing. I absolutely love it. It's made such a difference to have internet out in the woods, um, but it is the, it's, it's very random, and it's kind of terrible in that it could stop anytime. So if I cut out, then, um, I don't know, I guess that's the end and I'll just say toodaloo. <laughs> but hopefully, fingers, fingers crossed I won't. It only cuts out two or three times a day, but maybe not. Hey, so today we're gonna talk about leggy stem rot and root rot. Um, it's very exciting, there are people here. <laughs> How are you doing? I know I haven't been around in a long time. If you have any comments or things you want me to uh, read, then just put them below. I'm not sure if it's supposed to show up right away. I think it should. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so I have a whole bunch of people have been asking me lately, what's the deal with their seedlings? People are starting already and I am getting just an amazingly overwhelming amount of questions where people send me pictures and their seedlings have died. They have fallen to the ground. They have collapsed. They, the best one is where it just clunks right over. Right? So you've got something that's standing up and looking good and it's perfectly fine. And then one day you look at it and it's flat on the soil. What's with that? So I thought I would go over this today and just give you guys a little idea of what these three problems are and how we can fix them because it's really not that crazy complicated. I mean, maybe it is, but anyway, it's not that bad. I'm sure we can do it. So let's start with, and also while I'm gonna talk, if there are any questions, um, I am doing my seeds. So I've got some spinach, some more spinach, some radishes, some rutabaga, some beets, some kale, some parsnip, and some fennel, which is already planted here. And then I got loads more to go. This is a very small example of what I'm trying to hopefully pot up today. I don't know, I doubt I can do it all in one day. So the biggest problem with, which one are we gonna do first? Um, the biggest problem with stem rot. So stem rot is where your plant looks perfectly fine one day and it just kind of squishes at the stem and falls over and that's that. Um, the big problem here is that the soil is moist. The top of the soil is moist. And one way to get away from that is to bottom water. So what I like to do is fill my pot with soil. I know this seems really obvious, right? But maybe not. Fill the pot with soil. And I use um, kind of a normal soil, the soil that I would be using last year that I've been using to do all kinds of fun things, whatever it happens to be. I use that soil on about two thirds of my pot. Now, right now I don't actually have my seed starting soil. I didn't plan that far ahead. And then I take the seed starting soil and I would fill the remaining one third or maybe even a quarter of the top. This is where I want to plant the seed. And what happens is that this is not sterile. This is soil, right? It's got all kinds of yummy things in there. There's, there's mycelium, uh, there's all kinds of bacteria and growth and good stuff, which eventually is good for the plants. But when you're starting off as a really small seedling, the seedlings don't want to compete with what's in your soil. So if, now if, if you've been growing in soil and you have no problems, then just disregard everything I'm saying because this doesn't happen to everybody. But let's say you live in a moist environment or a really sunny environment or a super warm or anything where the conditions aren't absolutely perfect. The moment you grow your seedlings in a substrate that is sterile, the the bacteria, the mold, the mycelium is not gonna compete with your seeds. So your seeds aren't going to fall over dead the same way <laughs> that they would if you started them in soil. The reason why it works outside, um, 
outside in your garden because I know you're thinking now, how come I can grow, I can take my seeds and I can plant them in a nice straight line outside like traditionally we've done forever and those seeds have no problem growing. What's the difference? In this case, if we were if we were putting this into say a tray or even worse if it didn't have a bottom if it's just a sealed container you've got a lot of moisture that's building up in here over time um, or maybe really quickly if you super water it and it just sits there when you're outside in the garden the moisture is slowly sinking through and going down and down and down right into the ground so in other words your plants are not sitting in water outside also there's wind there's the sun there's all these other factors the sun is drying the surface the wind is moving things around the rain is washing through inside we have our little controlled environments these things don't apply when we're in our little controlled environments right so we have to be totally in control of what's going on so that's the first thing if you grow up here in the let's call it a substrate whatever you want something that's sterile either either if you plant it into um now i don't like using peat moss but as an example um coconut core would work anything that doesn't have anything alive in it um a perlite vermiculite coconut core kind of mixture would work your seedlings are going to do better because they are not competing with the mycelium that's out and about or the natural yeast in the air all these things that get into our plants so that is <coughs> sorry that is um stem rot okay root rot is something else root rot looks now i don't have any examples and i've been thinking that having <laughs> hey remy how you doing um, I've been thinking that maybe I should sacrifice some of my plants for you guys. I should just like, you know, kill them in, <laughs> in order to show you what this looks like. I'm going to raise this a little bit so you can see it better. There we go. Um, but, you know, anyway, I just thought to do this video today, so I haven't gotten around to killing some plants, so I give you good examples of what it looks like. But <laughs> you'll know what stem rot, like I said, stem rot looks like because your plant's perfectly happy and perfectly healthy, and then that's it, it just dies. It just falls over and it's gone. With root rot, it's a little different. It's like your plants look like they want water and you water them, doesn't help. Then you don't water them, like maybe they have too much water, doesn't help. You, um, put them in the sun, they don't grow. They, maybe they get leggy. They just generally look really, really badly. So root rot is essentially caused by too much water in the bottom of the pot. So I really like these pots. I've talked about this type of pot um, many, many, many times before. You do not have to use it. I don't always use it. These are seeds that haven't been covered yet. They're just broadcast, this is spinach. And it's just broadcasted into a plastic pot. I don't like using plastic pots, <coughs> but I have hundreds of these. I'd say there's probably a thousand little pots that I have collected now over time because I do so many of these, I just need them. And these guys are expensive and I can't clean them and wash them every year. So I gave up and thought, this is, this is the only way I can do it. If they have holes, you'll be okay. But the reason why I mention it is that if you have issues with root rot, something like this might be a good option for you because it allows your plant to breathe better. So you can see, um, which is really cool for a new beginner, if you're a seasoned gardener, you probably don't even watch this video, don't worry about it, just say hi and get on with your day. It's totally okay. But if you have these problems, <coughs> Why is it so dry in this house? Um, if you have these problems, you might find that this type of pot will help because you will see how wet it is. Now, this one isn't wet at all. Um, let me grab one that is. <coughs> yeah, that's hard to see too. You know the color difference? Not really. Okay. So let's say just for the fun of it, we shall overwater our little plant. These pots are kind of tricky too because 
they will kind of fall apart. So we'll see if it works. <coughs> um, so actually, I did just I did that wrong. I wanted to water from the bottom, but if I do that, you can't see it. So these pots are fun. Not that I'm like. Uh, promoting them in any way use whatever you have but if you're a beginner they're fun because when you put them into your oh I have comments hey guys good to see you all too I mean not really to see you but it's cool that you're there okay so let's say this is a pot uh, or a tray it's very hard to concentrate and have conversations how do people do this <coughs> put it in a tray and you bottom water you water from the bottom which means that you pour in here and allow it to soak up my whole point here is that you'll see the the line of the water going up you'll see that this part is lighter because it's dry and this part is darker because it's wet that makes sense right it makes total sense the point is <clears throat> that you won't have a plant sitting in tons of water does that am i do they is it working <coughs> okay so my fire is on. It's way too hot in this house. Hold on a second. Oh, and I've been alone for three days. I don't think I've said five words all weekend. Um, so what else? <clears throat> oh, okay. So the third one, was that everything we need to talk about with stem rot? Bottom water. Make sure you don't overwater. Don't let your plants sit in the water. These are all very bad things. These will definitely cause stem rot. Having water on the surface it will cause Sorry, those things will cause root rot. Having water on the surface will cause stem rot. The third thing I wanted to talk about was leggy plants. Now, leggy plants, I don't know. Leggy plants is complicated. So I'm off grid. I'll give you the little background story here. I'm off grid. Um, I live in the woods. There are trees everywhere. This room is a sunroom, but it's really only sunroom right now. The moment May happens when our leaves come out, it's gonna completely fill in and that'll be it for sun, which will be great because I don't want all that sun in the house when it's hot, <coughs> hot outside. But it's absolutely perfect. The house is facing south, so it's perfect for, for starting seeds or generally having plants. Now, that doesn't mean that it's as perfect as say, if I had um, grow lights. But I don't know, maybe it is because I never have problem with leggy plants, like ever. So that being said, um, I have many friends who do. And I think the first thing, why is, I am so, <coughs> I always talk this fast too, if that's what you're thinking, it's not that. Okay, so I think the first thing to talk about when you're dealing with leggy, raises back up so I can use our little kale as an example, is if you're not off grid and you have lighting, which you probably do, um, is your lighting is up here. I like to keep it about there. So if you can keep your light two inches above your plant, you're going to have, hello, um, you're going to have a much better growth, right? Because if it's up here, Obviously, the light's dropping off as the further higher you go. But if it's up here, up here, your plant, it looks good. This point is it looks good to us. But to the plant, it doesn't look so good. They're reaching. They're literally like, I can see you. You're right there and you're on all day long. But you're just a little bit past my reach. And so they, they stretch. They stretch and they stretch and they stretch. Which is when you get leggy plants. Now, so the first cure for leggy plants. <laughs> first cure. What was that? There was a comment there. Okay, wait, hold on. How do I, oh, there we go. Yes, exactly. Cool, this is neat. I'm glad to hear that you guys have this problem too. So I like to keep them about two inches above my plants, but as the plants go up, as the plants grow, you wanna raise that too. Now, this is a problem that we all have that's very personal, I think, because whatever kind of lighting setup you have is gonna be your own setup. If you have a very makeshift setup or if you have a really fancy setup, either way, you wanna run some kind of chain system so you can up the chains um, as the plants grow. And in my personal opinion, the lights that are small and kind of chunky are really only feeding that one or two or you know a small little section but a long bar is going to cover 
hopefully your whole tray. So, and, and again, this is a very personal thing, what kind of lighting you have and if it works, but let's say you have no lighting and you're interested in getting lighting, then, um, <clears throat> And, and you're thinking what types, what style, whatever. I would take a bar per tray because a bar in the middle means that you're gonna have, you know, a bar here, like a light bar across the top, and you're gonna have these plants reaching this way and these plants reaching this way, unless it's a really, really, really strong light. And then you're gonna have a crazy hydro bill, in which case it all gets all messed up because then you're not saving and what's the point? And I mean, you still have good organic food and everything else, but. Um, if you can do it with one LED, don't, don't let anybody tell you anything else. You need LED lights. The rest are just overkill. Per tray, then they're not going to be leggy. That's the first thought. I'm trying to read. Hey, guys. <laughs> Thor, wait, I know. Uh, what is your first name? I don't remember. But I do know who. Yes. You guys make the best tea towels. I need to get a, a bunch when we do the um, the Eastern Ontario Homesteading Conference in something. Somebody tell me the date and I'll say it. Um, yeah, definitely want to get a few more tea towels. They're really, really great. Um, okay, so that was leggy. Is there anything else about leggy? Hmm. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> oh, sweet. Awesome. Um, the other thing that I would mention when starting your plants and thinking that a window is a good idea. So initially when you're just doing seeds, you know, you've got your little seedlings. I like to, oh, and I should talk about that too, broadcasting, but <clears throat> one thought of the time here. Okay. So when you're starting your seedlings, um, we tend to think, let's put them near a window <coughs> because a window is, you know, there's light coming through and why not? It makes sense. When it's, it, if you think about this like a plant again, you actually have the, the opposite effect. The window is the coldest place in the house. So most plants like peppers want it to be 21 degrees or mm, maybe not quite that much, but about 21 degrees. Um, tomatoes like a little colder, like 18 or 19 degrees. You start those tomatoes or those peppers and you put them in a nice sunny space like what I'm doing today. It is, look at that. <clears throat> 21 degrees in this room. That's not actually there for you guys. It's just always there. Um, <clears throat> but at night, it's cold. It's like 10 in here for sure. <clears throat> so find a warm place in your house. So if you happen to have a fridge, like normal people, not like me, um, <laughs> a fridge would be great because the top of the fridge is nice and warm. If you, and then you don't have to use extra heating, right? You've got your fridge, you just put your trays up there. Now the next thing going along that and you're thinking, but my fridge is only this big, how do I put like 20 trays on my fridge, on top of the fridge, right? Is broadcasting. This is how I start my seeds, if I can do that without it falling out. So this is spinach, this is Bloomsdale spinach. I like to broadcast. <clears throat> um, if you, I know you guys can't see this yet, but these are, this is a tray. There's seven in here, eight in a minute. And each one of these probably has 50, 25 to 50 seeds. So, and I can put more in here. This is not quite full yet. Um, this way, and I do the same thing with the kale. Um, I grow it in here, and when they're about an inch or so tall, I will dump the whole thing out very gently. If you don't like pricking out, I'm in Canada, where it's super cold. <laughs> to answer your question. Um, if you don't like pricking out, then this method is not for you. Then go ahead and start each seed or two seeds in all of your containers like you normally would do. Don't, don't follow me. But if you like pricking out, which is when you take your little seedling and you come in with your, I like to use these popsicle sticks and you gently dig your little seedling out and just holding the top leaves, don't ever touch the stem and you gently bury it into the, the little container and it takes hours and hours and hours and it's incredibly, tedious and I don't actually like doing it at all. Can you tell? <laughs> but I don't have the space. I just don't have the space to start 
as many seeds as I need. Um, we run a CSA here. We have a huge garden. We have a huge perennial garden. I start vegetables. I start um, perennials, and I start an insane amount of annuals, which I really have to stop doing someday because why am I doing this? But anyway, um, so the best way to do that is to broadcast. This way, I can start them right now. Get say. I mean, fridges today are huge, so you could probably get five or six. Maybe not if it's built in, but even, you know, the cupboard above the fridge, maybe you could open the cupboard and just stick them in there. Maybe that's a little bit warmer. No, I didn't move. I'm sorry, questions. I didn't move to Europe. I moved from Europe. Um, so I lived in Europe for 12 years, and now I've lived in Canada. Uh, Seven, six, almost seven years, I think. It's quite the difference because I went from a zone seven where it was warm and they have flowers, and now I'm in zone five where um <laughs> where we are completely and totally buried in snow. What was that last comment? Yeah. Annual flowers are really cool. Um, annual flowers are great because you, you get a really good bang for your buck. I mean, <clears throat> you take up a lot of space. I, I do have polytunnels outside and everything, and I will eventually start moving everything outside uh, soon. But, I mean, soon, like next month, I guess. But in the meantime, um, they're all stuck in here, unfortunately. Okay, I'm, I'm all over the place with my thoughts because I'm trying to answer you guys and think. So let's go back a bit. So where was I? <laughs> Marcy, you just joined. Nice to see you. <coughs> okay, so once I've broadcasted um, on a typical fridge, that's where I was. On a typical fridge, you can put probably six trays because fridges are really, really big nowadays. Mine is like tiny. I have one of these itty bitty, yeah, it's like a cottage, uh, a college fridge that holds cheese and milk and that's about it um, um, and then rotate them out that's what I'm trying to say rotate them out so start them like this broadcast them like crazy get all your trays in there you really only need them there for maybe four or five days because of the heat your seedlings are gonna come out a lot quicker they're going to uh, they're gonna sprout really quick and the moment they sprout okay let me just you know for the sake of I don't know, having props? I mean, you all know what spreading seeds are like, right? <clears throat> okay. So these, see all those little white dots in there? Yay! These are sprouting. This is um, alfalfa for eating alfalfa sprouts. But it only took, okay, so seeds are different. Not every seed is going to, what was that? Remy, yes, I will watch your videos next. <laughs> um, not every seed is going to start right away, but alfalfa start really quick. So it takes maybe two, three days. I think I soaked this, I think I made this yesterday, actually, maybe the day before, and it already looks like this. You know, like, I mean, they're, they're coming. <clears throat> so the moment the seed starts to crack and even the tiniest little bit of green pops out, that is when you want to get it in front of the window. And Hopefully, I'm reading. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not. <laughs> I, I get it. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, your window is warm. Now, let's see. In the world of warm, how do I deal with seedlings that are warm or not warm? Ta -da! This is not a product placement. You can make these. Um, Hmm, I don't know how. Let's see. Um, shower curtains, maybe? Oh, I know. The plastic when you're building a house. I have lots of that. Lots. Everywhere. It's just, I mean, it's all bundled up with the stuff we haven't used. But you could totally create a little greenhouse, wrap it in plastic. Costs about 100 bucks. If you go to the building mart, you can get a roll. You can wrap almost a whole house in. So it's not super expensive. This little dude is from Amazon. I don't have a link. He's a five shelf. He's really cool because he fits these. I don't know why it's a male, but <clears throat> whatever. Oh, 
nice, Marcy. What kind of grow light did you get? Is it a is it a square? Is it a long one? Do you have any details? I'm always curious. <coughs> also, mostly I'm curious how much wattage it takes because I can't do it. It would totally suck up all of my uh, my house's power. My battery banks will be drained in no time. So this is how I deal with the temperature. I can fit, put um, 10 trays in here. I do really like it because it has enough space between each tray that it still gets sunlight. Last year, I didn't invest in any of these things. Um, and we've got 23 feet of window space on this wall and a wrap, wrapping around the edges. And so I put a bunch of um, little stools, just stools, and some wood across. And I started putting them out like this which was great, except actually I had pigs at the house, in the house at the same time, so that was a little tricky because they wanted to eat the plants, but anyway, it all worked out. Ooh, 19 watts, that's good. It's like my, it's almost like my chicken, chicken brooder thingy. It's um, 12 watts. So I had all of the seedlings here in trays, but in total I could only fit 30 trays, I think, in the whole space. So this takes up 10, which is so much better. So I'm gonna get, I've already ordered them, they will come soon, I'll have three more, and that'll be it for having a view. Like, do you want food or do you want a view, right? Um, <clears throat> but in terms of temperature, I can roll it down, I can roll it into a different room at nighttime, put it right in the, in the warm, you know, in like the bigger living room next to the wood stove if I want near the wood stove if I needed to. Um, and I don't have to worry about the cold when you're, and, and I think that's a really big problem because a lot of things you'll notice if you start tomatoes is a good example. Everybody knows how to grow tomatoes. You can start tomatoes easy in a week, right? But if you start them in a cold space, like this room is 10 degrees most of the time, it can take 21 days to start tomatoes and sometimes longer. That's a long time. And right now the whole thing is about let's get our tomatoes going let's not take forever so whenever you can move something around bring it into a different room try to keep your trays a little warmer you can also put grow mats underneath um i don't have any in the house at all <coughs> they are <coughs> outside in the potting in the um, yeah, in the potting house and in, in a box under like three feet of snow. So I can't show you what that looks like. But um, if you go online and you want to spend less, <laughs> um, if you find the, what is it called? Um, the ones are for reptiles. It's a, it's a little mat. You plug it in just like normal. Um, these ones don't necessarily have uh, a gauge for the temperature, but they they warm really nicely, not too warm, but just enough. And you can get them for reptiles. And then I think they're like 15 bucks a mat or something, or maybe even less. If you buy them for plants, for seeds, they're expensive. I mean, I'm sure someone can tell me that they're not really that expensive, but in my personal experience, they're pretty expensive. So I would go with the ones made for reptiles, which is exactly the same. It just costs less. <clears throat> that will also fix your problem. Uh, yeah. oh, wait. video. <clears throat> okay, covers. Covers are really important. Again, this is my own personal, very humble seed starting opinion, but I think covers are really, really important, certainly in my world. Um, this one being a flat cover. Am I lagging? Oh no. It looks like the internet's still on. There's Starlink for you. Oh yes, Marcy says, don't forget to hit the like button. Actually, a bunch of people are hitting the like button, which is awesome. Oh, good. <coughs> okay, Starlink is amazing. I really do love it, but it occasionally sucks, <laughs> which, whatever. This is the first live video I've done from this house, so that's pretty cool. So far, it's working. I will say, if it cuts out, guys, then I'll just say, toodaloo now. <laughs> and I won't try to come back, but it shouldn't, it should be okay. So, um, covers, things that can go wrong. Let's start there. 
<laughs> I should do it more often. Um, things that go wrong with covers is when they get too moist on the inside. Um, I have a friend who takes the covers off and wipes them down with paper towel every morning. I will not out her because I think it's way too much work. Um, no thank you. Uh, yeah, but they are pretty awesome. So a plastic cover, uh, a dome, or if you go back in time, they used to be made of glass. They were called cloches. The cloches, the glass ones are just the most gorgeous things ever and you can't find them anywhere unless you live in Europe. And even then, they're really, really, really hard to find because most of them have been broken by you know, <clears throat> someone because they're all very old. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, that was the next thing I was gonna say. Remy, um, so if anybody's like reading the comments, Remy says that he leaves the covers on until the seeds start. And that is what I was going to say too. I do, I leave the covers on. I think that the rain that happens inside, as long as it doesn't rain so much, as in it doesn't get so moist that the surface gets um, the mycelium <clears throat> and the natural yeast in the air start to grow on the surface, <clears throat> as long as that's not happening so as long as you're not seeing like a white moldy which is fine it's safe you're you're good don't worry about it but as long as you're not seeing that little bit of white film on your on your plants um you should be okay if you see that white film take the cover off right away because you might get stem rot which we already talked about and most of you missed because that was before when you weren't here yet <clears throat> Um, but I do leave it on. Now, in my case, this one doesn't have holes. This one is just like a, I don't know, there's probably a company here, but I don't need to promote the company. But anyway, there's no, there's no vents or anything, which is unfortunate. And it's a very flimsy material and <coughs> I don't know, they're cheap. <clears throat> but the ones I use are, are really tall domes. So they're about 12 inches tall or so. They have two vents on the top. They're made of really strong material and they cost a fortune. I mean, they don't individually, they're probably $10 each, but when you have many, 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 many of them, it's not great. Oh wait, your comment's leaving. What was your comment? Sorry. If it's very warm in the house, I will just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so exactly. So what I do is I leave the vents open all the time and that way the moisture can leave, right? And, and the same in my house, there's like one window upstairs that's just cracked a tiny bit. So all that moisture in the house when we're making coffee and, and melting snow for the plants, cause I don't have a well yet, um, is not building up in my walls, but instead going out that window. So it's the same concept in your, <clears throat> in your plants, in your domes. As long as, if you see the moisture on the inside, what I'm trying to get at is if you want to leave it, you're okay. Just monitor the soil. If the soil isn't covered in anything, if it looks fine, you're probably doing perfectly fine. You can leave it alone. If you find that the soil is starting to grow, take the cover off. I would not spend any time at all drying the insides of every all of these covers especially if you're doing hundreds of trays and I literally do hundreds of trays. In fact, I start right now. Well, I started already, but it's from this point every week or so, there'll be more trays that will um, be started and hopefully they will then do their thing, get nice and big and beautiful and move outside as soon as the polytunnels warm up, which I'm hoping is like in two weeks because it's really hot out there in the polytunnels. Um, and also I'm going to put manure into the beds to, to create the heat. I know you guys know what I'm talking about, right? All you homesteaders out there who have animals, I'm sure you know the joys of lugging the poop and putting it in the bottoms of the beds. Um, if you don't, you could find a farmer or just don't bother and have your plants in the house. That works too. So yeah, that was our stem rot, root rot, leggy plants, covering your plants, a good tip on how to put your, get your plants warm on top of your fridge. I'm sure there are other places. If you have a radiator, maybe you could put them near that. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to keep them there for long, so keep that in mind. Just the first few days will make a huge difference in how long it takes. Are there any questions? And did I miss any questions here? Let me scroll up or down. Does that work? Mm. That's weird. 
No, it's not gonna show me. Just have to check later. Anyway, if there are any questions, I'll answer them in text underneath. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. This was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, this was cool. Maybe I'll see if we can do it again. You are listening, not chatting. You guys are awesome. Rabbit poop. I'd lay up. Marcy. Yes. The rabbit poop heats up enough? Really? Ooh, I got tons of that in the house. There are um, eight rabbits in my house right now. Anyway, <laughs> we'll leave that for a whole new conversation. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. This was so cool. We'll see if we can do it again. And uh, yeah, I'm Scarlett. This was How to Grow a Garden. And I'm in the next episode. Toodaloo! Now I get the figuring out how to turn this off because I don't remember. Maybe I just clicked the X. I don't know. Oh, and if you're curious, those are Ceramas. There's lots of them. There's a whole chicken thing back there. <laughs> anyway.